Hi. I'd like to share a quick tip with you on how to get consistent countersinks and spot drills. And it's got to do with your micrometer stop on the quill. Now I've got one of the kinds that uh, has a push button so you can slide it up and down rapidly. Of course if you've got the standard kind you can move it up like that. Or if you don't want to spend a couple of hours of your life um, traversing that half inch 20 thread, you can get one of these guys. This is a uh, clip-on stop and it's got the half 20 thread on the inside. It's spring-loaded um, and they're super handy so you could actually clamp it on like that, make sure it's actually seated in the, uh, in the threads and then you can bring down your quill onto that. So let me show you using this thing. First of all, we're going to bring our quill down to our stop. Let me raise our stop up a bit. All right. A little lower would be good. There we go. So I've got it hard against the stop. I'm going to lock my quill. Now let me reposition the camera. Now I've already got my countersink loaded up in my drill chuck, and I've got my holes drilled on a half inch spacing. Uh, these are clearance holes for a 1032, and we're going to countersink them for a 1032 flathead screw. Um, now I still have my quill fed hard down against the quill stop, and what we're going to do is we're going to set our depth on the first hole, and then we can raise our quill up, move to the next hole, bring it down against the stop, and so on and so forth. We should end up with a very consistent countersink. So let's go ahead and get this set up. I'm just raising the knee in order to get my depth and we're going to just uh, raise it a little at a time and then check the fit of the screw and we'll go ahead and stop right there. Let's go ahead and raise our spindle. So I can see that my countersink is too small. And you can see that because the uh, head of the screw doesn't go all the way down. It should be flush or slightly below the surface. So all I need to do now is just bring it back down. I'm actually going to feed up a little ways on the knee. Uh, maybe 25 thousandths. And then run it back down against the stop and see if that makes a difference. Got to make sure you're rotating the correct way. So right there is hard against the stop, and we get that out of the way. It's getting a lot closer, but I still have a little bit to go. So uh, let's try this, maybe ten thousandths more. Almost there. Yeah, if I can get it out of there. Let's try another ten thousandths. Each time I'm just running it hard against the stop and then just checking my fit. And eh, maybe just a tad bit more. I'll go five. There we go. Fits down there. It's a little bit below the surface, but that's perfect. Um, the point of a countersink is so that you can uh, either make parts to this or slide parts over it. So you don't want the screw head sticking up. So now we've got our depth set and it's right up there against the stop on our quill. All we need to do is go to each of the holes 
and go down to that stop. So let's move over and see what happens. Okay, so we know it fits on the first one. Got a bit of a burr in there, I think. It fits perfectly in that one. Very nice there. And visually, you can see they're all very similar. So that's just going to add a touch of class to your work. Now this same technique can be used if we were going to be tapping holes for this 1032 screw and we were using a uh, spot drill. So let me load one of those up. So this is a 90 degree spot drill. Uh, spot drill doesn't have any clearance along the side here so it's really only meant to uh, put a little dimple there for a drill to, to follow or you can actually drill deep enough to where you automatically leave a chamfer on your drilled hole, uh, which is what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to do some power tapping, and we want to power tap 1032. So that's a number 21 tap drill, and we're going to bring this, uh, this spot drill in deep enough to where the chamfer is just a little bit bigger than the threads on this screw. So let's go ahead and get loaded up and cut some chips. Now I've got my speed already set. I've moved over three quarters of an inch from our previous holes um, and we're gonna start out hard down against the stop just like we were with the countersink. So now we don't have a hole already so we're just going to drill in a little bit. And let's try that. We're going to go ahead and zero my dial. And that's still too small, I can tell. But I checked the fit with the screw. So I'm going for a, a hole that's just a little bit bigger than that screw. I'm going to move in 20 thousandths and see what that does for us. And again, just bring it down hard against the stop. And that actually looks like it might be good. Maybe a bit more. We'll go another 10. Now this chamfer is not particularly critical. You just want it to definitely be bigger than the threads because when you're tapping you don't want to end up with a big burr on that first thread and that's what you're going to get if you don't have a chamfer at the beginning of the hole. And I think that looks pretty good. It's going to be just there. I'm going to go five more just to be sure. That looks nice. So let me go ahead and do a couple others and we'll do it on the same half inch spacing. And so there's all of our spotted holes. Now let's switch to our tap drill, which for 1032 would be a 21 drill. So you can see I've got a nice healthy chamfer there, and that's going to guide our uh, tap in and make sure that we don't end up with a big burr. Um, I'll zoom in a bit more so you guys can see that. Uh, 
All right, let's go ahead and do the others. So there's all five of our holes uh, drilled and chamfered. And uh, this doesn't even need to be a tap drill. I mean, if this, uh, uh, if you just wanted a chamfer on the edge of your holes, um, and you didn't want to use the extra step of deburring with a countersink at the end, uh, you could do it beforehand with your spot drill. And that's a technique that's used on CNC machines all the time. Uh, so uh, there's no reason we can't use it on manual machines. But this is a tap drill, so let me go ahead and grab a 1032 tap and I'll show you guys some power tapping. Okay, I've got my 1032 tap here. and Let me see if I can get this in focus for you. Um, now, this is what's called a spiral point tap, and you can see the point is just a little bit different. It's got this angular grind here, right at the tip on both sides. Um, now what this does is push the chips forward. This allows you to tap under power, which means that uh, the machine's actually going to be running. So with these, it pushes the chips forward so you don't need to constantly turn it back to break the chip every quarter turn like you do with a hand tap. Now, um, you can tap with with these with uh, by hand. Uh, you don't have to run them under power, and they're so much better than the crappy hardware store taps that you would get uh, that are hand taps. They don't. They just have a straight flute, and uh, uh, you have to keep turning them back and forth in order to break the chip so they don't get clogged up. Um, these are actually sharp. They're made out of high-speed steel instead of carbon steel, and uh, they work so, so much better. Now, since they drive the chips forward, they're great for through holes. Uh, you can use them for blind holes. Those are holes that don't go all the way through. But um, you need to make sure that there's room in the bottom of the hole to, uh, to drive the chips into. So let's go ahead and put this in and we'll uh, drive some, uh, tap some holes. I go ahead and take my quill stop off so it doesn't get in our way. Um, Another thing you have to worry about with uh, power tapping is you want to be in low speed. Um, now this isn't too bad. This is uh, 32 threads per inch, which means that the distance between thread to thread is a 32nd of an inch, or uh, 0.03125. Uh, but what that means is that when this thing comes down and grabs, it's going to be feeding by a 32nd of an, 32nd of an inch uh, with each revolution of the spindle, which means it's going to feed through pretty quickly. Uh, right now I've got my mill set at 1750 and that's just way too fast. I'm going to go ahead and just throw it into low range, which uh, that'll put it at 210 RPM and I think that'll be a lot better. Um, we also need to get some uh, oil on this. I'm just going to go ahead and use some, some tap magic. So what's going to happen is when I bring this down, it's going to grab and self-feed because of the thread. And as soon as it's all the way through, I can just flip the mill into reverse. It'll feed right back out. And then I can move on to the next hole. I'm putting a little bit of upward pressure on the quill handle so it doesn't, uh, the tap doesn't drag at the top of the hole. And hopefully you can see the nice threads in there. Probably can't. But I can screw this in and you can see them that way. So, there you have it. Lather, rinse, repeat for the last three holes, and that's power tapping and consistent countersinks and spot drills. Thanks for watching. Now go out to your shop and make some chips.